A few months ago, I made a video fixing my wife's 15-year-old Cadillac Escalade with 167,000 miles on it in one day to avoid buying her a newer and more expensive truck. The truth is, though, she didn't want an expensive new truck. When I met my wife, she drove a base model Oldsmobile Alero with like 150,000 miles on it and was totally good with that. She kept it clean, too, so I knew she was a keeper. She's a smart lady who thinks of family first, so an older truck to get the kids around was all good in her eyes. I'll admit, though, I've wanted to get her something more modern for a while. She works extremely hard, and if it wasn't for my wife, I would have never been able to start this YouTube channel. She'd be upset if I bought her something too expensive, and luckily the long wheelbase GM trucks like the Suburban, Yukon XL, and Escalade ESV work very well for our lives with kids, grandparents, and hauling cars and parts around, so I'd been searching for a good deal for the better part of a year. I wanted a 2015 or newer since it's the current body style, and I even considered buying a wrecked salvage title truck, but the numbers just didn't make any sense. Lower trim level Escalade models were still selling in the $20,000 range, and they still needed to be repaired and would always carry a branded title. And then this came up. It's a 2015 Escalade with only 73,000 miles, one owner, dealer maintained, and had been in Florida its entire life, so no rust. These are the pictures right from the auction site, and this Escalade was the very well-equipped premium model that came with features like heated and cooled seats, heads-up display, adaptive cruise control, multiple TVs, and much more. And they normally retail for about $40,000, which means I'd have to pay about $4,000 dollars in taxes as well. The best part to this truck is it still carried a clean title, but it was listed with structural damage. Now, some auction sites are very vague and bidding on a car like this can be pretty risky. This is pretty much all I had to go off of from the auction site. And even if this was local to me, which it wasn't, they weren't allowing in-person inspections due to the coronavirus. So if I wanted to bid on this, it was up to me to make an educated guess as to what this structural damage damage could be. First thing I did was run a Carfax and it verified a clean title and 27 service records at the same dealer, but an accident with airbag deployment. It wasn't enough to total the Escalade back then, which at the time was probably worth about $70,000, so it was fixed and the same owner continued to drive it and service it at the same Cadillac dealer until recently. I called the dealer and spoke to a service writer and learned that this was owned by an older gentleman who was possibly retired and just used the truck for long highway road trips. He said the last time he had seen it was only 800 miles ago to have the engine mounts and a faulty fuel injector replaced, and it was still under a factory bumper-to-bumper -bumper extended warranty. The service writer knew the customer well and said it was a total cream puff. Continuing on with my research, I then looked up the website for the dealer and formed my theory. This was a new car Cadillac dealer. They can't sell cars with obvious Carfax reported accident damage, especially with airbag deployment and possible quarter panel work. Work. They have a reputation to uphold, so only new or gently used or certified cars get sold at dealers like this, so off to the auction it went. I put in a max bid of $26,000, not really thinking I'd win, and I was shocked when I won the truck for $25,000. It's possible that this was just the noted previous repair from three years ago and nothing more. I'd search for a killer deal like this every day for about a year, and if my theory was right, this could be nothing less than an absolute auction steal at 25 grand, especially with a clean title. Or the guy ran over a boulder, damaged the undercarriage or the frame, something fell on the roof of the Escalade, or it's possible that three years ago when this was involved in an accident, they didn't do the best job fixing it. So we're gonna be looking in this quarter panel area. This was the primary accident damage. See what we can see, see what the previous body shop did to fix this thing. And I had it shipped from Florida to Chicago. And then my guys at Family Towing picked it up and are dropping it off here at Mancuso Collision Custom in Glenview, Illinois. This is my body shop. And this is my nervous slash excited face. I really want this truck to work out, but at the same time, I bought it sight unseen. It's already paid for, it's mine, it's as is. 25 grand is still a lot of money to gamble with. <sighs> 
Either way, I still think it's a good deal. I mean, I, like worst case, I'm trying to convince myself here. Worst case, I put five grand into it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I didn't tell my wife I bought this Escalade. This is a total surprise. And she's finding out right now, just like all of you guys watching this video. Every Saturday morning at 9.30, me, the wife, and the kids sit down and watch my latest video. So babe, if you're watching this, that means the truck either checked out or we fixed it in this very video. And it's probably sitting outside on the street and I gotta say the paint work I know it's hard to tell on camera but I can't really tell right away that anything's been painted and I would assume this whole area was painted about three and a half years ago but we do have some current damage right here so this will need to be painted and cleared and blended the rear bumper looks to be really nice the whole back end looks to be nice and we have some more scratches here yeah I can feel these we'll probably have to paint that as well kind of a bummer uh, really nice wheels. These are the 22 inch wheels. And from the pictures I saw, the tires look to be really nice. And let's continue on here. So they tell you a little bit in the auction pictures. They describe some damage, but you don't really know how bad it is until you see it. Like I did not think that this was actually pushed in right here. They list it as a big dent, but this is, this is really big. And there's a little crease right here too. So uh, I have a really good paintless dent removal guy that can hopefully pull this out and maybe that'll buff out. We might get lucky there. Um, wheels don't look to be curbed or really damaged. Tires, again, really nice. And we have a hole. We have a hole in the front bumper right here. And I, I'm not gonna lie, this almost looks like another car did this, maybe a tow cover from another car, something like that. But this bumper is gigantic. I wouldn't imagine we'd have to replace it for this hole. They could probably pop it off, do some plastic repair work, uh, and then paint most of it. And then before we get this up on the rack with Billy here at Mancuso's, I am just too impatient. Okay, so this is the area that was involved in the accident. So there's possibility that this frame right here, you can actually see some markings right here. It was at least taken apart. Um, and it's possible that this whole floor area was damaged. I'm not seeing any real smoking guns just yet. Oh man, I gotta say, this is a little scary. This is a little scary. All right, let's get it off the truck. All right, let's see how she starts up. All right, battery seemed a little weak, but it started. A lot of auction cars sit around forever and they all have dead batteries. Here she is, family towing is taken off. And supposedly these running boards pop out. No? All right, so let's unlock. No. Okay, can't get the running boards to pop out. We'll move on. <laughs> wow. This is unbelievable. I've never been in one of these. Really, really nice though. Running boards disabled. Ah, oh, it's got heads up display. I've never owned a car with heads up display. This is awesome. Aha, I got them to work. Look at that. Yeah, it was just a switch I had to hold to enable the running board. So we are good to go. Look at this cluster, 73,000 miles. Wow, this is cool. It's got wireless charging. These always bubble up right here. This isn't too bad. But the interior looks to be immaculate. It's got two TV screen monitors that come out of the headrest. My kids are going to flip out. Our 05 doesn't have any of that. Headliner doesn't look to be stained. It doesn't smell in here. And then this has to do with the, uh, look at that gap adjust for the adaptive cruise control. And heated steering wheel. Oh, and, hang on. It's got the bird's eye view for the backup camera. All right, you know what? Let's go for a quick drive. I just wanna see how this drives before we get too ahead of ourselves. Oh, and this has like little suede inserts here. I think that was an expensive option and in the door panel as well. And I did notice this. From what I understand, this guy basically just cruised this on the highway, so he's probably going like one of doing one of these, rubbing out my leather. So I could probably get that fixed by their leather guy here. All right, here we go. First ride in the Escalade. It shifted out of first. I like it. There's third. Real smooth. Alignment so far at 33 miles an hour is great. <laughs> my wife is gonna love this thing. This is crazy, such an improvement over the 05. I was already playing with the whole screen area. There's like a trillion buttons to press. I gotta say, this thing has more stuff to do in it than my Tesla does. They're, this, they're both the same year. I gotta try this adaptive cruise, if I can figure it out. 
without crashing. That'd be nice. Come on, Adaptive Cruise. Oh, are you slowing down for me? No, no, you're not. I watched a Doug DeMiro video on this car, and I think he said this has like 17 total buttons. And it's weird. It's like a smartphone in the sense that when you press some buttons, it will do a little click vibratey thing. Um, it's pretty cool. Oh, but look at this. This is so weird. Whoa. That's how you do the volume. Crazy. It's got some pickup. Shifts nice. The uh, cluster is all fake. This is kind of weird. I think you can tell there's a delay. Whoa, my seat just started vibrating. Oh, that's because, hang on, let's drift off. I think if you drift off uh, out of your lane, it'll vibrate at you. This, oh, dude, I don't even care about that speed bump, dude. This thing is beautiful. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna give this to my wife. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna, she can drive the uh, the salvage uh, Tesla. <laughs> I hope we don't find any frame or undercarriage damage or anything crazy with the quarter panel. This could be a total steal. Smooth, it just had new motor mounts. Can't feel anything. All right, let's see, sunroof. Wait, don't tell me this isn't one touch. Are you kidding me? You don't have one touch Escalade? One touch close? Okay, I'll take it. All right, I think this thing has 460 horse. Let's see what she's got. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell it's like 6,000 pounds, but it runs and drives perfect. We're at 65, my seat's vibrating because I'm close to the line or something. Heads up display, phenomenal. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, let's go put it on the frame machine with Billy and let's hope Billy likes it. All right, we're about to get the Escalade up in the air for an inspection. We're gonna do it on a two post instead of the frame rack so we can see a little bit more, but let me show you guys a couple of features my wife is gonna absolutely love. Check this out. You wave your foot underneath the bumper and the lift gate opens automatically. So if you have your hands full, you are good to go. And then this is huge. On our 05 Escalade, to remove the third row, uh, you have to literally remove it. And it's like 200 pounds. On this guy, check it out. You hit these buttons, goes down automatically, totally flat. And then these do the same, hit it again, and they pop up. <laughs> This is crazy. I know that a lot of other SUVs have stuff like this, but we've been driving around this older Escalade for, I don't know, five, six years. We've never had anything like this. All right, we're taking a look at the Escalade from underneath. A little nervous, but I gotta say right off the bat, you can tell this is from Florida. Very, very clean under here. Um, I did notice this shock right here. The bushings are kind of shot and it does have a leak, although it rides really nice, but that's probably really expensive. And look at just how clean this is. The floor, the drive shafts don't have any play. The frame looks real nice. And we can see the, one of the motors for those side steps. I'm sure that will eventually fail. <laughs> and they put the ABS module underneath the truck. So this is gonna be the last time this looks like this. I'm gonna have to coat this or cover it or something because Chicago salt is gonna destroy this whole area. It's gonna look like crap. Um, but look at how clean this is, wow five years old. I love cars from the south. This looks so nice. The exhaust is in great shape. So far the frame looks really good. The floors are clean. And we do have a little bit of a differential cover leak. No big deal. But we really need to hear from Billy. Uh, Billy, what do you find in here? You can definitely tell something was done over here. Uh, these bolts have obviously been touched. These wires are just kind of hanging out. Uh, so there was definitely some damage that was done here. If you look right in there, you can tell that that's an excess amount of seam sealer and you compare it to the other side and it's nice and clean over there. And one other obvious thing too is they had, looks like they had to weld in a panel under here and they never cleaned up their welds, which could cause corrosion. Uh, so what I would probably do at this point now is clean it up as best as we can and undercoat it to prevent any rust from happening. So realistically, everything's fine, everything's safe, uh, structurally sound. Um, the only things that we would do is, like I said, clean up those wells to prevent corrosion, uh, secure the wiring, and that's pretty much it. Everything else looks fine. Uh, I did see some stuff on the outside of the car. I found this spot here and another spot here. It looks like it's just someone may have touched it while the paint was still wet, and that, that actually left an imprint in the paint itself. Um, also the orange peel probably isn't where it should be, 
uh, but a good wet sanding should be able to take that out. So overall, I think the truck looks good. You know, all the gaps look good. Everything lines up the way that it should. Of course, there's a couple of dents and dings, but uh, we can take care of those. What do you think about the hole in the front bumper? I forgot to ask you about that. Uh, for that, we'll probably end up taking off the whole bumper. We'll do a plastic repair from the backside. This way you'll never see anything out here. Uh, paint it the factory color and no one will ever know any better. All right, so if you guys want to see a future video on the guys at Mancuso's fixing all this little stuff at the body shop, a very straightforward, to-the-point type of video, comment down below, and I may also include my wife's reaction to watching this very video and being surprised with the Escalade as well, now that I know that it's not a total pile and it's safe for us to drive. <laughs> So we're using a 3000 grit sandpaper, doing a little bit of wet sanding. You can see already that a lot of the scratch is gone. Obviously, these are the deeper ones right here. You can kind of feel that. See what we can do. We still got to buff this area out, obviously, but it's getting better. Jim, you are a madman. This is crazy. I can barely even see there was a scratch. Honestly, I didn't think we were going to be able to get this far with wet sanding. Dude, nice job, man. Wow. Now, what do you think? Can you buff out that gigantic dent on the door? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have to wait till the next video to take care of this big hand-sized dent right here. Uh, they just wanna make sure we have the right PDR tools and the paintless dent removal person that they normally use is not here right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the glue to pull out a small dent so I can show you guys that these can be fixed. You can see right in there, yeah, right above, right above the uh, gas cap there. We can actually get this out by gluing this little knob on there. And just like that, this dent is gone, this scratch is gone, but we have plenty more to do. And I know there's a bunch of Lamborghini and exotic car rebuilds all over the place on YouTube where they kind of just skim past everything that they're actually doing. But if you guys wanna watch a video where we actually show you how to repair things on a more realistic car, like this hole in the bumper, then definitely stay tuned. We're gonna be removing the bumper, showing you guys how this is professionally repaired from the inside without needing to replace a bumper that's at least a thousand dollars this thing is gigantic uh, we're gonna save money I'm gonna tally it all up for you guys as well so you know how much above and beyond the twenty five thousand dollars that I paid for this car I had to put into it so we have a leather specialist coming out he is gonna fix up this $850 door panel for about $100. Uh, we're gonna see what we can do with the wrinkles here. This happens on all the GM trucks. Of course, we're gonna show you exactly how this huge dent gets taken out. Uh, all the other little dents, we're gonna do some detail work. It's gonna be phenomenal. We're gonna make this thing basically look brand new, but I am so, so excited. This is such an improvement over our 2005. Take a look at this interior. My family is gonna totally flip out. I just cannot get enough of this truck. That'll do it for today's video. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and babe, this is the part where we turn the TV off and we all head outside to take a look at your new Escalade. And it's got a big old red bow on it and everything. And I know it's not totally complete, but you know I'm gonna make it absolutely perfect in the next video. So thank you so much for everything you do for me and the whole family. This whole YouTube thing wouldn't even be possible without you. So I hope you love the truck. Let's head outside.